In this video, we'll be taking a look at the external screen. This is where you'll set up all your external walls and roofs for each room in your project. If you're looking at the show single view, you'll see that each column represents a surface, be it a wall or a roof. On the show all view, each row represents a surface, so keep this in mind depending on which view you're using. We'll switch back to the show single view to explain each input. Firstly, you set the exposure or orientation of the surface. The N here means that this is the north wall of the building. This is the east, this is the west, and this sun represents the roof. If you right click, a pop-up window will display, giving you different options for wall orientation. You can select one and click apply, or you can select azimuth down here and enter an angle if your wall orientation doesn't fall on one of these options. Keep in mind that any orientation you select here is added to the building rotation specified on the project screen. If you've already corrected for the orientation of the building with respect to true north, the N here will represent building north rather than true north, and the E will represent building east, so on and so forth. The true north arrow will be displayed here, taken from your input on the project screen. For roofs, you'll usually just select the sun input. If you know your roof will be in the shade all the time, you can select shade instead. There are other options for sprayed and water covered roofs, but these are for specific applications that aren't commonly used. If you want to apply shading to your roof, you'll need to select the H option here. You'll then usually put zero as your azimuth angle for the roof, which means that the shading will be orientated in the building north direction. This means that the left reveal will be on the west edge of the roof, the right reveal will be on the east edge, and the overhang will be on the north edge of the roof. We'll cover an example for this in a future video on advanced shading schemes. Moving on, next you'll enter the height and width of the surface in millimetres. We'll skip the next couple of inputs for now, as they are optional, and jump to the wall and roof type field here. This is where you enter the wall or roof construction. If you right click, the wall and roof type library will appear. You can select one of the types from the library here, or you can select one of the custom types you've previously set up on the wall screen and click apply. If you hold down Alt and left click the Absorptivity field, some guidance is given for typical values for this taken from the ERA DA9 application manual. We've now covered all the compulsory inputs on this screen. If required, you can add windows to the wall that you've now set up. To do this, right click here and select the window type that you've previously set up on the window screen and click apply. You'll then enter the number of these windows that are located on this wall. If you have more than one, you'll select the direction that they are repeated in, which is usually H for horizontal, as can be seen here. You'll also specify the distance between windows, the vertical offset, which is how far the bottom edge of the window is above the bottom edge of the wall, and the horizontal offset, being how far the leftmost window is from the left edge of the wall. Now what we've skipped over is shading. Shading schemes can be applied to either walls, windows or even roofs. You can apply a shading scheme to a wall or roof using this field here. If you right click, a list of all shading schemes that have been previously set up on the shading screen will appear. You can apply shading to windows by entering in the relevant shading scheme reference in this field. As you may have noticed, you can have shading schemes applied to both the wall as well as each window on the wall. This Ohang Free scheme represents the overhang of the wall itself, and this REV shading scheme applies a left and right reveal to each window. The other input we skipped over is percentage to return F. Here you can specify a percentage of the total surface load, including any window loads, to be treated as a return duct gain. You may choose to use this if, for example, part of the wall is above room ceiling and you're using the ceiling void as a return air plate. 
This is up to your engineering judgment. Finally, the inputs in the bottom section of the table relate to adjacent shading, which is the shading provided by buildings adjacent to the wall in question. I would recommend bringing up the help for this by holding Alt and left-clicking one of the input fields. As you can see, you'll enter in the width, depth and height of the adjacent building, as well as the distance for how far the building is away from your wall, and the left shift to determine the relative position. It's always a good idea to check the preview here, which shows both a plan view and elevation so that you can confirm you have modelled things incorrectly. As you can see, this is the wall here, and this is the adjacent building that will be taken into account for shading purposes. That's all for this video. Please join me in the next one, where we'll be looking at the partition screen. Bye for now.